Hello, hello. I'd like to have a short reading and a prayer this morning. If you'd like to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Read verses 44 through 46. Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so mindful of you this morning. We're mindful and thankful for coming to you and hoping that we can be of some service to your name and of some service to your glory. Dear Lord, we're thankful that we have this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. May we be focused on how we act. May we focus on how loud we sing. May we focus on how hard we pray. Dear Lord, may we focus on you and everything that you do. And may we always focus on the cross and what it means for our salvation. Dear Lord, may we sell everything that we have for your glory and for the kingdom of heaven. May we always focus on you and may we do everything that we can to, to gain your, your trust and to glorify you in everything. Please bless those that, are, that we are mindful of right now, that are in need of our prayers. We're mindful of Robert and Wilma. We just ask you that you please bless them and help them. We ask that you bless the Lark family and bless them during this time of, of loss. We're mindful of Alan and we're thankful for him. I always ask that you bless him. Dear Lord, bless all those that are a child. Dear Lord, we're just so mindful of everybody that is sick and that needs your blessings and needs your healing hand. Dear Lord, thank you so much. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our first song this morning will be number 712. Jesus is coming soon. 712. Let's sing the first and last verses of this song. <laughs> Trouble sometimes are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is that said. Open your heart to God, saints of the just King Rod. Sing the way to Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will be there to promise will sign. All of the dead shall rise. 
morning will be number 523. 523. We'll sing the first and last verses of this song. I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way for me. first and last verses of this song. Have our open prayer this morning. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of
for your uh, yeah, uh, for your help and your uh, ability to heal them, Father. Father, we just ask you, if you will, just to heal them and bring them back home, back to us soon as they can worship with us. Father, we just ask you to be with those who are hurting uh, because of grieving over the loss of loved ones, Father, especially the Lord family and the loss of Brother Herman. Father, we just ask you to comfort them in the days ahead. Father, we just thank you for this country that we live in, Father, and we just ask you to be with their leaders and the leaders of, of this world all over, Father, that they uh, make a law that govern us, and Father, that this nation will become a godly nation once again. And Father, we just ask you that there will be peace on this world again, Father, and that all the fighting will cease. And Father, we just ask you to, to be with the leaders of, of these countries. Father, we just ask you to be with Brother Barron this morning and say, Break some bread of life to us, Father, we pray that you give him a good remembrance of the things that he's prepared to bring to us and that we listen to this with the intended ears and, and apply them to our life. Father, we just thank you for our military who are fighting on foreign soil. We pray that you just be with them and bless them and bring them home soon. Also be with their missionaries who are spreading the word that their uh, work that they're doing brings those to you. Father, we just ask you to be with those who have never named your word, Father, and never heard your word, Father, just give them time and opportunity before it's too late. Father, we just ask you, Father, to be with us. You know, Father, that we do make mistakes and, and we do sin, Father, we just ask you that you will just to give us a big sin. Father, we just thank you for all the many blessings, but the most important blessing that we've ever, that we've received, Father, is sending your Son to die for us, Father. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our song of invitation this morning will be There's a Fountain Free, number 909 in your song books. There's a Fountain Free. Psalm before our lesson, our, script, our scripture reading there, our lesson will be number 1011, The Church in the Wildwood. If you'd like to, please stand. I'm sure Brother Herman will be smiling down from heaven as we sing this song this morning. 1011, first and last. There's a church in the valley by the wild wood, no lovelier spot in the dale. No place is so dear to my childhood as a little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild wood. people for your life. 
Again, I'm glad that you're here. Hope that you're doing well. Uh, I'm glad to be here. And I know that the Lord is happy that we're here. would like to be honest with you a little bit. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage this week. I feel like I, I get up here and I, I think I was worried about this lesson. Worried about just if I would be an effective minister or not. Um, a lot goes into to this, and this isn't to, to pump up what I'm doing or to or to put myself on a pedestal or anything like that. It takes a lot for any of the men to get up here and to lead us in any particular type of way, whether it be in song, whether it be in prayer, whether it be in, in Bible reading. All of these things are desperately important for what we do here. But I really feel like I have not been a very good communicator. I don't know why. I'm not saying this for anybody to come up to me afterwards and say, Baron, you're wrong. <laughs> but, but I do think that I want to be effective today. And so I, I, I beg the Lord to do that for me today. Um, and hopefully this lesson is helpful for you. Hopefully this lesson is something that you can take with you. Because really, I think what this lesson is all about is the idea of being stuck. The idea of being in a place where you feel like you are not being effective or being in a place where you feel like you are not being helpful for anybody. I think in my life I felt stuck in a number of different places, whether it be actual physical locations, stuck in a place where you could not leave. Maybe you have felt stuck in a career, felt stuck in a job, and maybe it was just a J-O-B to you. Maybe it was just something that you said, you know what, I, this is just what I do to get money. This is just what I have to do to make sure that there's food on the table. Sometimes I worry whether we feel stuck in our relationships. Maybe we feel stuck in our marriages. We feel stuck that we're in this place where we're... Uh, where we, th there's no love, there's no passion, there's no, um, there's no feeling of neededness, which is probably not a word. And you feel that one thing that you have done is that you are just going through the motions. Because one thing about being stuck is that every day is the same. There's nothing new, there's nothing different, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing helpful. And you feel like maybe you're just doing it for the kids. Maybe you're just doing this whole thing, this whole marriage thing, because you know it's the right thing to do. Maybe we feel stuck in our uh, religious life, which I even hate using that term, religious life. Maybe you feel stuck in your Christian life. Because you look back on your week, part of what we do here is we look back on what our week looked like. And we look and we say, I don't feel like I've been a very good Christian. I don't feel like I did what I was supposed to do. I don't feel like I, I was the Christian that God wanted me to be. And quite possibly it's because you felt like there was an opportunity that I had to communicate the gospel to somebody and I didn't do it. There was a moment I had to avoid temptation and I did not take that opportunity. There was a moment that I felt like I could do a good service to somebody. There was a moment that I felt like I could truly help someone who was poor or desperate or in need, and I did not take it. And we look back on our, our week and we say, man, I didn't do any of those things. And then in our Christian life, we feel stuck. We feel like we're not growing we know we're not new to any of this. We know that what the preacher is talking about, what the minister is talking about, what the sermon I heard on the radio or the sermon I watched on YouTube, I know that what they're saying is true. But man, I just feel stuck. I just feel like I'm trapped in this cycle. That I'm trapped in the cycle of church on Sunday, church on Wednesday, but then Monday through Saturday, nothing's different. And nothing's unique. One of the reasons why talking about, uh, talking about being stuck is kind of belittling the point that we're making, and I don't mean to belittle the point, but today's 
marvel that we're marveling at of God, the thing that we're looking at at God and trying to think about and talk about is this idea of redemption, that God has bought us back. Redemption, one reason why I'm worried that I'm belittling the point of redemption is because the point of redemption is to buy people back from slavery. That the word redemption is a money term, it is a financial term to talk about buying someone from slavery and that person was a slave to this group or to that person and now they are a slave of mine. They are a servant of mine. And it feels belittling to true acts of slavery in the world when I just talk about, I just feel stuck. No, I just feel stuck. Slaves are not just stuck. They are, it is a, huge, a, a terrible thing to be in slavery. It's a completely inhumane thing to be in slavery. Something that still happens even to this day in certain countries of our world. So I don't want to belittle the point of slavery, but I, or belittle the point of God's redemption of slaves. But I do want to say this. There is an idea that I feel trapped Maybe I feel trapped in my world. Maybe I feel trapped in the way that I act. My own personality has kept me trapped. Maybe my lack of self-control or my lack, my lack of ability or my lack of adherence to God's will and God's law has kept me trapped in what I'm doing. Here, if you'd like to turn your Bibles to Isaiah 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Thank you, Bobby, for reading that for us. Thank you, Pate, for leading those songs. Thank you for that, Snow, for that prayer. Um, Pate purposefully picked a lot of those songs because of Herman Ward, and I appreciate him doing that to honor him. And so I appreciate that. I did not know him, but I, I love every single one of those songs, so I'm, I'm okay with it. You know? uh, but here, Isaiah 43 helps us in, in thinking about this idea of redemption. Isaiah 40 through 55 set themselves up very, very differently from the rest of the book of Isaiah. A lot of times people structure the book Isaiah 1 through 39 is one separate part of the book. Isaiah 40 through 40 uh, through 55 is another portion of the book. And Isaiah 56 through 66 is its own section of the book. Because there seems to be some different things happening. In Isaiah chapter 1 through 39, there's a lot more story, even though it's not even going to be as much. There's some separate instances of different kings that are mentioned. In Isaiah chapter 40 through 55, there's going to be different kings that are mentioned, like Cyrus is going to be mentioned in chapter 45. There's going to be a lot more poetry, a lot more beautiful poetry. People don't normally read Isaiah 1 through 39 to get this truly beautiful, poetic nature of the book of Isaiah. But Isaiah 40 through 55, you can read any section of, this, of that section of the book. And man, you, your eyes are just flooding with tears because of how much God cares about you. Because of what God is doing for his people. And Isaiah 43 is just like it. Isaiah 43 begins like this in verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 7 this morning. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will, not, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom.